Out of every single Pacific Northwest boot that I've owned, reviewed, and cut in half, as of March 10th, 2023, eight o'clock at night, recording this video, a little bit sick, under the weather, this is my favorite Pacific Northwest boot. So let's cut this thing in half, run it through our tests, and try to figure out what is it about this boot that makes me love it so much above and beyond all the rest of the Pacific Northwest boots that I've reviewed. And thanks to JK Boots for sponsoring this video. So to best describe and help you guys understand why this is my favorite Pacific Northwest boot, you have to understand a few key things of what I love and what I hate about this style of boot. So what is it that I hate about this style of boot? Well, every single one of these Pacific Northwest boots is a pain to break in. It is a trial of will to get this boot to fit to your foot, to get all the leather to break in and be flexible and not completely destroy your feet at the end of the day. The next thing is because of all the different materials and all the layers of leather, they're just stinking heavy. The third thing I hate about Pacific Northwest boots is they are rigid. They are not flexible. This is the JK Super Duty. Look at all that leather. Each one of those layers causes it to be a little bit less flexible. They just are heavy, inflexible, and hard to break in boots. So what is it that I actually love about this style of boot? Well, they are as durable as any boot ever made by man. They're quite literally the most durable thing you can put on your feet. And they're durable because of the second thing I really like about these boots, and that's the lots and lots of leather on the inside of the boot that slowly compresses the shape of your foot, giving you a nearly perfect imprint of your foot. Almost as if you went to wet cement and stepped in it, that style of footprint inside of your boot. And also because of all that leather, you get ridiculous arch support. This is their JK Super Duty that we reviewed a, a month or two ago, told the whole story of uh, why boots have heels, the history of logging in America. That video is blowing up. So if you haven't seen that, that's a good follow-up or a preface video to this video because we hit on a lot of really interesting points. And so the issue is this is kind of a paradoxical construction style because all the things that I love cause the things that I hate. And all the things I hate are a result of the things that I love about this boot. And that's where this boot really shines. It fixes a lot of those issues in a really unique way. So how does JK solve that problem as a really thick, durable, non-flexible leather? Well, they solve it with the magic of bison leather because this stuff is absolutely insane. It's four millimeters thick. And the crazy thing about it is you would assume at four millimeters thick, you'd be walking around in casts with zero malleability and comfort, but this stuff breaks in faster and is more comfortable right off the bat than 90% of any heritage leather that we've ever reviewed. Bison leather has some really unique properties is caused by this pebbling effect of the leather because you almost have built in flex points and compression points in those little gaps. And then you have the thickness and that almost armor like effect of having the pebbles on top. So you get the flexibility of having a narrow leather and the malleability of a, a soft temper leather, but the durability and protection of a really thick four millimeter leather. So just by switching to a thicker bison leather, it solves that tough break in and maintain the durability. But how about the really heavy weight? Well, Pacific North Northwest boots are really unique feeling because you just have so much leather wrapping around your foot and once it's broken in, your foot kind of just snaps into place and it, it, because of that custom footprint, they're really comfortable even though it's a little bit hard underfoot because of how hard the leather is. And the way that they do that is by building up all these layers of leather, like in this JK Super Duty, that each layer slowly compresses little bit by little bit until you get that custom footprint. So how has JK taken that concept and simplified it and made it easier and less heavy in the OT boot? Well, they've removed the full length leather midsole that you see on their regular boots, but they've kept that full length six millimeter thick veg tan insole that runs the entire length of the boot, which reduces a lot of weight. And it probably does cut down on some of the compression because you don't have two layers too compressed to really get to the shape of your foot. But the majority of the compression takes place in that first layer. So technically it's not going to compress as much, but still probably 80 to 90% as much as one of their, their regular boots. The other way that they've reduced weight is by doing a unit sole rather than the two piece sole with all the layer and nails in the heel that adds just a bunch of weight without a lot of extra benefit. You know, I, I still like the aesthetic look of a leather heel stack or even just one layer of leather, but it is a lot of extra weight that's cut out in the OT boot. So that with a few other minor changes, how much weight does it actually save? Well, surprisingly a lot, it's over half a pound per boot. So that you save a pound of weight on a pair of boots by going to the OT boot. And what about the final thing, the rigidity that's caused by building up so much arch support? Because Pacific Northwest boots are work boots through and through. And so they have a ridiculous amount of leather and you lose a lot of flexibility by building up the strength of the boot. And with all those layers independently having their own rigidity, they are not flexible boots, which that 
rigidity can be a really good thing for some jobs like wildland firefighting and logging because that rigidity helps work like almost like a springboard to help push back every time that boot is flexed. But if you're not carrying a 100 pound pack with a chainsaw on your back, you don't always need that much support and most people would prefer a little bit of flexibility in the toe of their boot. And the rigidity is also a result of building up so much leather to build up that arch support, which once again, if you're doing a seriously heavy duty manual labor job, arch support is vital to your foot in the same way that rigidity and that springboarding effect is, is good for your legs. Because instead of your arch needing to hold up all the weight of your body and everything that you're doing and the impact of stepping or, or walking or hiking, that arch support cradles your arch, which supports it in a good way so that you're not overexerting your, your arch muscles and the muscles in your feet and it's supported so that the end of an eight hour shift, you haven't completely worn your arch out. So for a work application, arch makes a lot of sense. So how did JK maintain that arch support in the OT boot that is very simplified and removes a lot of the really heavy leather components? Well, this little wedge right here is where all the magic happens on top of the, the bison magic. Because this midsole wedge is called a lineman shank. And usually this is added to a pole climbing boot or a lineman boot or anybody that wants, that is going to be standing on rungs of ladders all day long. They add that into the boot on top of all this other leather to build up that arch for more support and more rigidity. So the real brilliant aspect of this boot is they've recognized that that lineman shank will still build up the arch and you don't really need a full length midsole because of how thick that insole layer is. By repurposing a component in their construction that is usually used for really heavy industrial applications and they've repurposed it on kind of the opposite end of the spectrum on one of their more lightweight, flexible, agile boots. And it works perfectly because the way that lineman shank tapers down is right where the arch needs to be and you can feel it immediately as soon as you throw on a pair of these you notice the difference on how much more flexible the toe is compared to any other pacific northwest boot so those are the three main reasons why this is my favorite so let's cut this thing in half and really see how they achieved that and if there's anything we're missed on the inside and how they finished building up that arch support because i still don't think we've identified enough layers to justify how much arch support this boot actually has Okay, we got them cut in half. And in case you're thinking like, oh wow, a sponsored video where the sponsored boot happens to be his favorite boot in all the world, or at least the Pacific Northwest, what a coincidence. The boots don't even look worn and you're right. And that's because I've been wearing my own pair of OT boots for the last like year and a half since they released this model. And just so you know, I really, really wanted just to cut apart my old pair and keep this really nice bison pair because it fits me perfectly. But we're cutting the bison pair because it's the most recent offering. And like I said, they've changed a few things. Let's see what's inside. Finally, after like a year and a half or two years of wondering why I like these boots so much, you can see exactly why. Because it's really, really simple on the inside. And that's part of the beauty of this is how perfectly simple it is. Because you can see that lineman shank lines up exactly where it needs to to build up that arch. And you can also see what I meant by that full length leather insole that's gonna give you that compression underneath your foot. And I thought for sure that we would see the leather shank that is seen in most of their boots as that arch support built up. But really what they've done is they've taken a piece of the leather their upper and used it to fill the void caused by the upper wrapped underneath between the insole and that lineman shank. You can also see that ridiculously thick veg tan heel counter that's just complete overkill and cups your, your heel like someone's literally holding your heel. So now to the final question, is this still my favorite non-collaboration Pacific Northwest boot? Yes, I love this boot. It gives you almost everything that I love about Pacific Northwest boots without any of the things that I hate. And for the time 
type of work and the type of hobbies and the things that I do in boots at this point in my life, it's absolutely perfect. It will handle literally anything I could throw at it, but still remains flexible and agile and comfortable, easy to break in. It's right in that sweet spot for me, for my life. And JK Boots is one of these brands where they're making everything made in America. It's a family of immigrants that they fully appreciate the opportunity and the lifestyle that's been provided by making American made boots for Americans at the top end of quality by using all the best components by continuing to innovate and change the game. Even if it is by just removing a simple component, it can make a big difference in a boot. And you're buying a boot from a brand in JK that is making the most heavy duty, longest lasting superlative work boots in the entire world. And they build these boots in the most traditional way, hammer swing by hammer swing, nail by nail. Each component is put on by hand. There's not a lot of automation in this operation. So all that combined is why this is still my favorite boot made in the Pacific Northwest. Thanks again for everything you guys do. See ya.